against Iceland. Usual housekeeping rules, please remain on mute at all times. Only unmute yourself when you're ready to ask a question. And if you would like to ask a question, please raise your virtual hand in the bottom right-hand corner. Before we throw open to questions, we'll start with an opening statement from Gareth Southgate. Thanks, Andy. Um, well, it's been a slightly different week for us in terms of uh, the restrictions around the hotel and um, having to have meetings with people in face masks, things like that. So I have to say the players have adapted brilliantly to that. Um, we've had a really good training week. We're looking forward immensely to playing for England for the first time in 10 months. And um, yeah, it would be good to get on with the game. OK, thanks, Gareth. Before we uh, open it to opening five minutes with Rob Dorsett from Sky Sports News, uh, what we'll ensure is after Rob has finished, um, if we can make it to one question per person with the option of a follow-up, and I'll see if time allows, raise your virtual hand again and we'll come back to you. So, Rob, do you want to get us underway? Hi, Gareth. Hi, Harry. Good to see you. Um, Gareth, seven, seven members of your squad um, are on caps, so you've got exciting new faces in pretty much every position. You mentioned there as well that you haven't had a, an England international for, t for 10 months, and I think what you only had three or four training sessions with them this week. Um, in all your time, is this one of the most difficult squads, one of the most difficult starting 11s you've had to put together? Um, no, in the end, no. Um, I think the, the preparation and the planning for the camp where we weren't sure on the impact of injuries pre-season, um, how far teams would go in Europe, um, and then most difficult of all, the, the virus situation. Um, that, that has been complicated for sure. But since we've been in camp uh, and got on the training pitch, then the players have um, adjusted and adapted. We've got a lot of senior players who are used to training the way we train and playing the way that we play. Um, are a great influence and welcoming to the younger ones coming in, the less experienced guys. But also the young players coming in have no fear. They, they adapt very quickly. They add to the level of training and the competition. And um, we, I've, we've really enjoyed the week. It's been great to be back on the, on the football pitch, that's for sure. How are the fitness levels within the squad generally? Um, is everyone in the squad going to be able to play two games in four days? Uh, well, I don't think everybody is at that point, but we've got enough who can. So um, I've actually been really pleased with the level that the players are at. I think they're all very conscientious anyway. I think the days are gone where players came back for pre-season and they weren't in um, tip-top condition. Um, and we've got guys who only finished playing a couple of weeks ago who had a short break, but uh, are very much up to match fitness. So... Um, that isn't as big a concern for me as I thought it might have been. Um, there's been a lot of excitement, obviously, about the first call-ups for, for Phil Foden and Mason Greenwood. Um, are we going to see them play? <laughs> well, I don't, I don't think you'd expect me to genuinely answer that, Rob. But um, <laughs> what I would say is that everything we've seen on the training pitch would have no hesitation in, in starting any of the players that have been with us. Um, and that's why they're picked in the first place. But also then you're never quite certain how they'll adapt and how they'll fit in with the group. Um, but they're two of another group of very exciting young players that are coming through the English system. What have you made of Jack Grealish and his first involvement with the squad? Yeah, well, Jack had to miss a um, couple of days training early on with a with a problem he had uh, from his club game at the weekend. Not Not too serious. So... He hasn't had quite as much time on the training pitch, but he's fitted in fine. Um, clearly, it's been a difficult situation, Gareth, with Harry Maguire and the, the fact that you had to select him and then, and then drop him. Uh, have you spoken to him since he was dropped from the squad? And, and does he come straight back into your thinking for the next international break in a month's time? Yes and yes. Um, we, you know, we've been in touch right the way through the last two and a half weeks. And... Um, uh, you know, it's been clearly a really difficult period for him. And I think the last few days have been very important for him to be able to relax, get away from all the attention, um, get, get a rest, m mentally get a rest, because, of course, he had a short break anyway, but that was then, um, the, you know, the events that happened in Greece had, had really dominated that. So 
I think he needed that switch off um, and he'll be able to go back to his club and absolutely we would be looking to involve him in October. Good man, thank you. Can I ask a couple of questions to Harry if that's okay? Thanks for waiting, Harry, patiently. No <laughs> um, mate, we heard um, yesterday that the squad had had a discussion pretty early on in the camp about the, the Black Lives Matter campaign and, and that you will be taking a knee before this game. Can you tell me a bit more about that, how those discussions went, who led them and, 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 and how, how strongly people felt about it? Yeah, it was more of a kind of a general general discussion, really. Um, I think it was important as a as, as a team, as a, as a nation, as uh, the staff, everyone involved uh, wanted to be on the same page, and, and we thought it was important to continue taking the knee be, be, before the game. So um, yeah, it wasn't a, a, a massive meeting or, or anything like that. It was just uh, a pretty quick discussion, to be honest, that everyone was on board and everyone wanted to do it, um, and and we all think it's important to continue that message for. For obviously country uh, whenever we play and, and uh, club games as well. A quick one on the game, Harry. You were, you were there in Euro 2016 in Nice. Um, bad memories for all of us, but you in, in particular, I should guess. Is, is that one of your worst experiences in an England shirt? Yeah, it's definitely one of the, the toughest nights I've, I've had in an England shirt, but um, I think it's, it's a game that I've definitely learned from. Um, obviously, that was my first international tournament at the time. Uh, I was still inexperienced at, at that level and, and even club level really um, so yeah all throughout the journey in, in my career I've always tried to take uh, nights like that uh, as, as a chance to learn and, and improve from and, uh, and I think I've definitely done that as, as a person I think the team's definitely definitely improved over the last uh, four years so um, yeah of course them, them games always uh, are in your mind and, and you always think about what you could have done better but um, yeah, we've moved on well. We're in a we're in a great place as a squad, uh, exciting team, and I think we're all just really excited to be back playing uh, for England. To be honest, it's been a it's been a long time. It's been great training here with the boys. So um, yeah, everyone's looking forward to it. Good man, thank you. I'll hand on to everybody else. Thanks, Andy. Thanks, Rob. Next, we'll turn to Sam Matterface from ITV. Hello, Gareth. Hello, Harry. Um, I think, Gareth, you've selected 82 different players since taking over as the England manager. Um, does that sort of show an increasing breadth of talent that you've got to uh, pick from? Or does it highlight the perils of international management? Um, well, firstly, Sam, I wish you good luck for your debut. Um, <laughs> and um, no, I think um, we had a, a situation where... There was a lot of players coming towards the end of their international careers, perhaps, and um, you know, inevitably, over four, a four-year period, you are going to have players that uh, that are coming to the latter stages of their career. Um, inevitably, when whenever we pick a squad, we have a lot of players that are either missing through injury or um, uh, you know, um, form. So injuries, in particular, in some of those squads, have forced us into lots of changes. But then in the last two, three years, I think we've just seen lots of exciting young players come through who we believe we should be exposing to training with the team, working with the, with the uh, staff. Um, and we haven't hesitated to put them in. And sometimes the right thing has then been to put them perhaps back with the under-21s for a spell and then, and then maybe bring them back in. Uh, others have just stayed in and um, kept their, their place with the squad. So... I think it's um, yeah a, a high turnover. I was surprised when I read the figures myself, but um, I think at times we've just wanted to bring people in, see if they can adapt. Sometimes they've been able to, and that competition and that um, freshness and energy that new people coming in brings um, has meant that our level of performances have stayed consistently high. And I think if we had been a lot of numbers and not consistent performances, then that would have been a different matter. But um, the pleasing is, thing is we've kept experimenting, we've kept blooding young players, but we've kept winning and, and you have to do that. Thanks, Sam. Uh, currently no virtual hands raised, so please do so. Yep, James Holly from ESPN. Hi, Gareth. Um, you've talked a lot about the sort of psychological work you've done with the team since you took charge. I just wondered... With that Iceland game, uh, have you used that as a sort of specific reference point? Have you made the squad sort of watch it again, or how much has that been a factor in in the work that you've done on the on the psychological side since you took over? Um, I think a couple of years ago we we looked at 
two or three matches that we had played and different aspects of those games. Um, and for us, as a coaching team, the biggest thing from the Iceland game was um, the patience um, once you go behind in a game. You know, very often you prepare the team for a nil-nil and we don't like to talk about what happens if you go behind. Um, but in any game of football, no matter how well you're playing, it, the opposition can score a goal out of nothing. And so then the decision-making under pressure, the patience to wait for good opportunities to create better opportunities. I think that's something we've really added as a team over the last few years. Um, we've talked about it a lot. The players know that if we're ever behind, then we keep doing things the way that we do them. We keep playing the way we're playing. We stay calm. Um, and we, we make the right decisions on when to take shots and when not to take shots and, and getting in those better areas. So I think that's part of the development that's happened and, and definitely we used that experience as one of, of a few to, to learn from. Thank you. Thanks, James. We'll go back to, no, we'll move to actually Jack Pitbrook from The Athletic. Hi, Gareth. Um, Hi, Jack. The, the last game that you played in Kosovo was such a long time ago now. Do you feel like how much can that factor into your selection of players for the Iceland-Denmark games or is everyone basically starting again from scratch? Um, well, I don't, I don't think we start from scratch because I still think that experience is important and you've got to balance um, leadership and uh, international experience, which is in, uh, always important, with youth and energy. I mean, the, the reality is our experienced players are still youthful and energetic. So, um, but but it's helpful to have those um, experienced guys in there um, when young players are coming in or if we're, if we're giving people a debut. Um, so there is a balance. We've always got to bear in mind what people have done for us in the past. But of, of course, you've also got to look at how people are on the training pitch and whether they are uh, ready for the game and up to speed. Thanks. Thanks, Jack. We'll go back to Rob Dorsett, Sky Sports News. Um, Harry, can I ask you another one, if that's okay? Um, I mean, clearly you're one of the most accomplished goal scorers that, that England's had for a, a very, very long time. Um, but you've had a chance to train with Mason Greenwood this week, who a lot of people feel is um, in, your, in your shadow, maybe, but certainly a very adept goal scorer. What have you made of him? And, and can you try and explain to us that what, what that goal scoring ability is and where it comes from and how you work on it? Yeah, no, uh, Mason's been great um, since uh, the first training session we had. Um, you can tell he's full of confidence uh, as a player, um, not afraid to shoot, not afraid to, to take players on. Um, and that's just actually uh, what we want. And um, yeah, he's obviously done uh, great for, for his club in, in, in the period after the lockdown, especially. And um, yeah, it's great to, to have him in, in, in the team, I guess. Uh, as a goal scorer, um, people use the phrase as a natural goal scorer. I guess it's just one of them things you 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 kind of you work on a lot, being in the right place at the right time. Um, some of it is just uh, instinct, uh, be, um, balls dropping to you in, in the box and, and being able to finish it. Um, but I guess um, looking at him in the, in the short time that that we spent together, uh, it's it's just the all different types of finishes, whether it's left foot, right foot. Um, inside of the foot, uh, powerful shots. Um, I think that shows a real complete goal scorer when you can, you can score in any situation. So uh, obviously it's only been a, a short period of time, but uh, he definitely looks like a, a, real, a real top finisher and, and we look forward to having, having him in the squad uh, yeah, to come because he's still obviously very young. Good man. Um, one quick one to Gareth as well, if that's okay, Andy. Um, Gareth, you, you haven't got a recognised left back in the squad. We talked about that um, when you announced the, the squad and um, I know you have options that could play there, but can you talk to me about your thinking of how the formation might work and whether you've you know, considered the possibility of using three centre-backs again like you did in the World Cup? Yeah, I mean, I think we're always looking at different options and um, we've tried a, f a few different things in training this week. And I think we'd want to continue to do that over the autumn um, because we, we've got to have some flexibility if you're rigid in the system that you have and then you lose players that are fundamental and maybe you, in some positions you've got a lot of options and in others not so many, um, then you've got to have the ability to switch. So um, we'll always keep 
assessing that. Um, the most important thing is that players are comfortable in their role. They understand their role. Um, again, I, I talk again about the balance of youth and experience. Um, and, um, you know, we've got to have that resilience as a team. We've got, it, it's lovely to talk about the young players because they're so excited, but we've got players that now it's winning is what it's about for them with England. Um, they've knocked on the door a couple of times. Um, they're at a stage of their career where, yeah, just to be here, just to be getting caps isn't enough. Um, they, they want to add to the medals. They want to add to the successes and victories. And, um, you know, you need a core of the team that are at that point in their career where that's the focus and collectively they drive the team, they drive the habits and behaviours every day. Okay, thanks everybody. We'll end it there. Quick reminder that this, the full recording of this media conference will be available on request, but thanks again for joining us today.